completely gone. Um, all right. So, I don't know. Chin chain chain. <laughs> Great. <laughs> chain of fools. <laughs> I mean, really? You got me to sing on camera again. That doesn't happen very often unless I'm in the presence of that person, which means he's a discriminating... Uh, never mind. I'm just not going to go there. It's going to get nasty. All right. Um, ah. So, chain, chain, chain. That's an example of a chain schedule. <laughs> Hi, Carly. Thank you for the question on the... What was it? I can't remember your... Chain. Chain schedules? Mm -hmm. Chain of fools. Um, so, um, let's see. Chain schedules of reinforcement. These things are really not that confusing, but they can be kind of difficult to see, probably because they're so obvious. And, and that, that's not, I'm not putting you down. It's really like, oh, what was that? Oh, it looks like a chain behavior. If you said that, then congratulations, you're on a chain schedule. Um, so basically, behavioral chains produces, produce chain schedules with each step being the reinforcer for the completion of the previous step. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's a compound schedule of reinforcement. Okay, so you have schedules of reinforcement that are going on, um, and a, a, a chain schedule means you have to complete the first link, all right, and it before and before you start the second link, you complete the second link before you do the third link. You already know that, right? Um, they have to be in a particular order; they're not random, otherwise, and, and they're signaled, all right. So you have discriminative stimuli for each one, so it's not too confusing, um, and the. For the, the completion of each chain serves as the reinforcer for the previous chain, if that makes any sense. So let, let, me, try, let me try that again. The completion of each sub-schedule of reinforcement, if you will, serves as the reinforcer for the previous step. And when you complete the last one over here, um, then the, you are probably earn some larger type of reinforcer. Um, of course, in the laboratory, this type of stuff is done with the last step. You give the organism food or water or something, but in real life, it might just be as simple as the motor being hung on the wall. What? Not hung on the wall, but hanging from a cherry pick. Would you like an example? Because you asked us about an example, so let me give you one. Recently, a friend of mine said, Come over and help me pull the motor in my 1964 Ford Falcon. And I said, Okay! Sounds great. I don't know why I do it this way, because I don't have a phone like that anymore. They're, a little, they're more like this. So, anyway. So, yep, sounds good. I'll come over. All right. Fast forward a week, and two, or three, or four, maybe even a couple of months, and... Um, I show up at the house, and I've got my overalls on, and I'm ready to go, and I'm like, let's begin the chain. Hint, hint, right? So before you pull the motor, you can't just walk in and yank the motor out, right? You need to do a whole bunch of stuff. First things first, disconnect all the hoses, right? There's one schedule of reinforcement, disconnecting the hoses, right? Um, so then you got to do something else. I don't know, disconnect the wires, right? Uh, then you have to do something else, like, I don't know, disconnect the drive sh shaft. Oh, then you have to do something else, like disconnect the, uh, um, what you call it? Um, the exhaust, all right? So the exhaust is all disconnected. Now you go through and you can disconnect the motor mounts, but the whole time make sure somewhere in there you've hooked up the cherry picker so you don't, your engine doesn't drop and fall. Um, so then, anyway, you go through and then you jack up and you do this and you lift the motor up a little bit and you slide it forward and you lift it up some more and you slide it forward and you lift it up some more and you slide it forward. And each one of those different sets of behaviors is um, the link in the chain schedule, right? So the end result in this case being a conditioned reinforcer and the conditioned reinforcer is that the engine is out of the car and hanging from the cherry picker, dangling and we're all congratulating ourselves and going to get a beer and forgetting what the hell we're going to do with the engine now. Um, so, I, you know, so maybe there was an unconditioned reinforcer in there, but that would have been the alcohol, but who knows? Um, I hope that makes some sense. Basically, I want you to think of chain schedules as anything, any, in a sense, any behavioral chain is a type of chain schedule, right? Um, because each link serves as a reinforcer for the previous one. It's the same type of thing, except you have different schedules of reinforcement associated with it. Sometimes the behaviors can be the same in each one of those, each one of those links, but it doesn't have to be, right? Um, so unscrewing certain bolts from part of the car, it's always unscrewing certain bolts, but if I'm working on this section of the car, whatever this section is, maybe I've got five bolts before I can work on this section, there's three bolts. So totally different schedules of reinforcement, but, on the, but we've chained them all together in order to complete the large complex behavior, um, which is removing an engine from a car. So, um, sorry if I went into something a little bit more off the wall than what I normally do, but what the hell? It was an example of a chain schedule. Don't forget to ask more. Thank you very much. We appreciate your questions here at Bayer's Beauties. Take care. I can't thank you enough for making it to the end of a video. <laughs> no one watches to the end except you. And for that, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, share, even donate maybe. Anything. Just watch more videos.